experiences in wrapping a machine learning library, a C++ machine learning library in Python. Uh, it's a bit of a negative thing, it's more a post-mortem, but uh, I think there's something to be learned here. So what is it? JML is a really high performance machine learning library. I'm going to talk about the innovation cycle, which is why how I use that to uh, be really effective in solving machine learning problems. I'm going to talk about my requirements for Python wrapping. What are difficulties I encountered and some recommendations or what I would do if I was to start again. So here's a link, it's on Bitbucket. Uh, I say it's a high module efficient machine learning framework. It uses uh, very idiomatic C++, so it uses boot li boost libraries, templates, function objects, things like that. Turns out that those things are really hard to wrap. It's very modular, so a lot of problems you solve not by taking the high level interfaces, but by plugging little bits and pieces of it together. It's very, very fast, it's multi-threaded, it's vectorized, it offloads things to the GPU where it can, things like that. And it's also highly memory efficient. For me, the kinds of problems I solve on, which are big data sets, machine learning, it's really the key to my productivity. Now, I've used it for various things there. It's more like bragging than anything else, but it has been used in some real situations. So here I talk about the innovation cycle. As more a researcher, this is basically what I spend my time doing. I have an idea, I have to test it somehow, so I write some code. I then have to run the experiment, I wait for the results. Once I get the results, I have some ideas on in analyzing the results to see what I do next. For a lot of the data sets that I use, they're really, really big, so I spend a very lot, a large amount of time waiting. I also don't necessarily have a massive cluster at my disposal, so I have to be careful about that. And my productivity there, it's a bit of a generalization, but it depends really on the amount of time I spend coding, the amount of time I spend waiting for results, and the amount of time I spend thinking. For a lot of machine learning problems, the waiting time absolutely dominates all the other, so that's what really what you want to reduce to improve your productivity. And this is where JML increases my productivity. Just a little bit talking about the GitHub contest. That was a contest to design a recommendation engine. It took me about 10 minutes to run. I got in, came in second place in the competition. It took me about 10 minutes to get them results, which meant that in a day I could do a lot of experiments. Other people didn't necessarily have that. That's a quote from a guy who did it in Ruby. He had to basically start up a whole bunch of servers on Amazon to, to get going. Uh, so with that waiting time taken care of, what about how can I improve the coding time? That's why I want to use Python. So what I want in my wrappings, I want it to be idiomatic in Python language. I don't want to be able to crash the interpreter. I want to have a natural feel to it, and I want it to expose the full power of the underlying modules. I don't want to just write C++ code in Python. I encountered a lot of difficulties. The biggest ones were mismatches between C++ idioms. For example, it's easy to make something which looks like uh, uh, something is iterable in Python. The problem is you have to understand that underneath is C++, which has really strict requirements. If you don't meet them, you get a crash. There's also complex ownership, like shared pointers. It's very difficult to deal with in a, wrap, in a binding. C++ data structures are clumsy in Python because you have to always convert them back and forth. And templates are really difficult to handle too. What did I use? I tried with Swig. It was good to get started and it does automatic stuff for you, but it's buggy and it's full of black magic. If it doesn't work, there's no way to know why, it just doesn't. It creates enormous files as well, like 45,000 line C files. It ended up being unsuitable for the job. So after that I moved to Boost Python. It's powerful, has good syntax, manipulate Python objects, it's flexible and most importantly it's explicit. It does what you ask it to. But it takes a long time to compile and it's buggy and it's really difficult for distributions to package. Despite this, I still think Boost Python is the best choice. So recommendations, if you want to wrap some C++ code, start small with a really narrow interface. Write an interface module in pure Python. Don't try to just do one single binding. Have a outside binding, which is what people see, and an inside binding, which is your helper classes, which is written in, the, in uh, C++. Construct internal helper objects in Boost Python. You can uh, increase the safety of things like generators, you can manage references, you can do type conversion, things like that. And think about binding when you're writing the library. Uh, create safe iterated classes, so instead of having a pointer, you use an offset, then it can't crash. Don't expose complex data structures as part of the in interface. Expose a functional interface instead. Minimize coupling within the library, and functions are much, much easier to wrap than classes. That's all. Thanks. Thank you, Dominique.